Hey guys, welcome back. In this module, we're going to replicate a uh, assessment from the UNHCR's Public Health Facility Toolkit. Uh, this is uh, an initial assessment that the UNHCR carries out together with implementing and or operating partners. And I've just whittled it down to these two A4s worth of questions. Um, so we're going to start uh, in this particular video with the initial assessment record. So first thing we need to do is we need to go to our ComCare project space, uh, which we set up in the previous module. So if you haven't done that yet, um, please go back to the previous mod module and look up how to set up the uh, ComCare project space. Or if you know how to do so already, just go ahead and create a new ComCare project space. So first thing we'll do is we're going to create an application. So here we see our super simple survey, which we created in the previous module. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click new application. Okay, great. So this brings us to the form editor. So again, uh, here we can do our application previews. I'm just gonna click this away because it's just taking up space and we're gonna do this in BlueStacks anyway. And then first thing we'll do is we'll name our application. So we'll name this application Comcare Basics. And then in the app description, we'll write just a simple form. And then we need to save both. Great. And then once that is saved, we'll add our first module. So here uh, where it says add, I'm going to add a module. And in this case, I'm going to just add a survey. Um, case list and case management is something we'll come to, uh, we'll come back to at later modules. Great, so once that has been added, it brings us straight to the form editor. But before we do anything here, I just want to go back to the module itself and talk a little bit about that. Modules are used to logically group forms and forms are usually grouped by case. So in our example, uh, the, the case we're looking at is health facilities. So we might have a bunch of different forms at the health facility level, but then we also, after that, might have a bunch of forms at the patient or client level, or for example, at the village level. So different forms that um, capture information at the same level would be put in to the same module. So for our example here, we just need to change this module from surveys to health facility, because that is our module. And again, you can add a description here if you want. And for uh, our purposes for this module, for this training module, we're only concerned about um, the set, setting up the name for this module. Okay, so we've clicked on survey, which brings us back to the form editor. And let's just have a quick look again at the, the actual paper tool that we're going to digitize. You can find this tool as well as the complete UNHCR Public Health Facility Toolkit in the accompanying materials to this course. So it's this one, All right? There's a little introduction here about the initial assessment, uh, what it's meant for. And then here we have the actual questions that they ask. Now this obviously isn't complete. This is a summarized version. Um, but either way, uh, starting off your form with a kind of welcome message or introductory, introductory message uh, is, is always a good idea. So let's start with that. So I'm going to go back to my survey. I'm going to add a question. And our first question is going to be a label question. So a label question is a question that basically just displays some text that you want to show uh, your, your enumerator or mobile worker. So for the question ID here, we can just say introductory message. And then for the display text, this is the actual text that we want to display. So reading this introduction here, you know, th th this is kind of meant uh, as an explanation to UNHCR staff 
Um, but what we want to display here in our introductory message is what would the mobile worker say to the staff at the health facility that they're going to be assessing. So I'm just going to write up a bit of text now and then I'll see you guys here in a bit. So I've written the following. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. With this assessment, we would like to examine the aptness of resources and settings in order to improve the efficiency of the program and not to investigate or audit the human resource structure or use of resources as such. I would just like to ask you some brief questions about your health facility and the people that work here. So it's always good to start off with you know, thanking your respondent, uh, briefly just explaining you know, what it is and what it isn't that you're out to do with uh, you know, your particular survey, and then just tell them that you want to ask them a couple of questions. Um, this is also assuming that you have uh, permission from you know, the government, uh, the people at the health facility uh, to, to do this survey and also consent from the individual respondent. So usually we would actually have a, a separate question group with uh, questions regarding consent. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that out for now. Also note that I'm able to make the display text box bigger by dragging this corner up and down. So next thing we need to do is we're going to digitize these questions within this section. So notice how <clears throat> this form is, is divvied up into different sections. First, we have the initial assessment record, then project services, access to health, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we would like to mimic these sections within our digital form by using group questions. So group questions are very important and, and we'll see that especially later when we start building out our dashboards, but it allows us to really easily structure our digital forms. And you'll see as well, it, it actually makes it easier within the form editor itself because we can collapse questions within a certain group. So once we're done with a section, we can just collapse that section and, and start working on uh, new sections. So first off, initial assessment record, I'm just going to select it, copy it, and then here I'm going to click on uh, the only question that we have in here, this label question. I'm going to click on add question, and uh, this is going to be a group question. So I'm going to go here to groups, and then we see three group types, a normal group, a repeat group, and a question list, and we'll come to these two at a later stage. For now, I'm just going to click on group. Great, so again, we get the display text. And as we mentioned in the previous module, the display text is what the enumerators get to see on their phones, whereas the question ID is actually what we get to see in the export. So I'm literally just going to paste um, this section in here. And we see our display text, and then we see our question ID. Our question ID has automatically changed uh, the display text a bit. It's added um, <coughs> underscores and it's removed capital letters. So the underscores are important because um, it's, it's, it's following kind of database naming conventions. Great, so now that we have our question group, we can start putting the individual questions into this group. And so our first question is the project or the project name. So again, I'm just gonna copy it. We're gonna come to add question. This is clearly a text question. So I'm just gonna add text. And as we can see, uh, we can see that within the group, we have our first question here. So for the display text, I'm just gonna paste. It's gonna give us the question ID. And then we need to decide, is this a required question? Well, I mean, it seems pretty obvious that they would need to know, you know which project um, sponsors this particular health facility. So yes, we will make it required. And there we go, we're done. This is our first question. So the way this will come up on a mobile device is um, there, there will be a, a blue bar above saying initial assessment record and then the, the question, in this case, project. And the way this will come out in our uh, Excel or, or our export, our data export, is we'll have a column called initial assessment record dot project. So we know... And, 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 you know, that'll be the same for all the other questions. So we know, hey, all those questions belong to the initial assessment record bit. 
And again, here we see a little square. So if we click it, uh, it collapses all of the questions within that particular group. So clicking it again will uncollapse uh, those, those questions. Great, so the second question is the facility name. Again, this is a text question. I can just paste and we're going to make it required. Next one, three, is the camp or settlement. So again, a text question. I'm going to paste. Uh, and now we see that the question ID does something strange. It doesn't take this uh, particular character because it's a special character, the forward slash special character. So we need to change um, this question ID to read camp or settlement. However, it's not letting us type anything. And that's because we, uh, this is just a suggested text. So if we click on a previous question and then go back to our original question, now we're allowed to edit it. So I'm just going to add or in between these two spaces. And again, um, it's a required question. Question four, person in charge. I'm just going to copy. Again, it's a text question. Paste. And here we can see that uh, the regular dash is allowed. So again, I'm going to make this required because I'm going to assume that uh, it is known who, who the person in charge is. This is reasonably easy to figure out. Um, you should always be a bit careful with your required questions because it, ca it can be possible that the person um, doesn't know, that your respondent doesn't know the answer to a particular question. And if you then make your question required, your mobile worker is just going to enter any old you know, data uh, in order to be able to continue with their survey. But in this case, I think it's reasonably safe to assume that they'll know who the person in charge is. So I'm going to make it required. Then the next question, implementing partner, operational partner, or donor. Uh, so yeah, I mean, who, who are they? That, that's what they're asking. This is not a multiple choice question. So again, I have this issue here. So I'm just going to say IP or OP or donor. Uh, again, I'm going to make it required. And I'm just going to make it a bit more clear what, what they want. So I'm just going to add name. Great. Uh, what else do we have? Then we have contact person. So again, this is a text question. Going to make it required. And then what else? Um, so at the top here, we see project slash facility. Then we have evaluator. And then we have date. So with Comcare, because we need to sign in with our mobile worker, we actually have the evaluator name. And then for date, uh, again, this is also automatically recorded. But as a good practice point, we always put the date in as a separate question because it is possible that one day um, the, your, your enumerator won't have their mobile device with them and they need to use the paper forms to enter the data. And then when they submit their data or when they uh, enter it using a, a laptop, um, the date of the data entry is going to show up. Whereas what we want is the date of the actual survey. So we're just going to put this in extra. Now, this is a different question type. So we go to date. We have the choice of date, time, or date and time. We simply just want to know what is the date. And then I'll type here assessment date. We'll make it required. And you can see my question ID is already filled in for me. Great. And so obviously, it's not necessary for us to keep repeating these three questions on every page because we've digitized everything. Um, what else? So we've added a date. Maybe it's nice to take a picture of the health facility so that we have it for our records. So pictures, come, uh, picture questions are found underneath the multimedia capture uh, tab here and then image capture. 
So for the display text, I'm just going to write a little instruction. Um, so I'll come back to you with okay, that. Okay, so I wrote, please stand outside the health facility and try to capture as much of the, let's say, front of the health facility as possible. And then for the question ID, I simply have health facility picture. This is because you know this instructional information is very useful for the mobile worker, but once we've exported the data, um, all this additional information isn't going to help us analyze the data much. Um, so I'll leave it unrequired, just in case the mobile worker's camera doesn't work. And then for image size, let's go large. And finally, let's add a GPS location. So GPS locations are found under the Advanced tab, and then here, GPS. And again, I'm going to write a small instruction, um, and then I'll have a different question ID. Again, I've written a longer explanation. So I said, stand next to the health facility and ensure that you have a clear line of sight with the sky, take the GPS coordinates, and as a question ID, I just have the health facility coordinates. I have left this question unrequired because it is possible sometimes that the mobile worker's um, GPS doesn't work um, and therefore you need to be able to continue with the survey even if the GPS uh, doesn't work. So once I've completed all that, um, I've completed the first section of the assessment and I'm going to click Save. 